Hi, uh, it's Mr. Kostenbader here with AP assignment number two, Cut Paper Portraits. And what I like so much about this assignment is there are so many ways that you can approach this assignment. So portrait, the word portrait is going to be a very broad and flexible term for this. All right, this is another example of Sam Brown's, uh, I felt like I had to... Uh, Share it since he did win the silver award at the art so at the uh, Scholastic Art Awards uh, last year. All right, and so you're really showing me that you have a knowledge of organic and geom geometric shapes. Um, and overall composition is also really important for this one. Uh, mentioning the flexibility, this was done in I believe tissue paper, magazines, and paint. So you're, you're also welcome to use other mediums with the cut paper. Uh, you know, there's definitely flexibility there. If it makes a mark, you can use it. What I'd like you to do before you jump in headfirst into this project, and this is really important because it's going to add originality and creativity to your work. The more inspiration you get, the more influences you get, the more original your work's going to be. So I have a page here just on Chinese paper cutting. It's more of a folk art, but they do some really neat stuff, and the, the style of it is very interesting. So uh, watch this Chinese paper cutting video. Okay, Remember, I did all the research here, so all you need to do is, is watch these and get inspired. Another artist uh, from Japan, Masayo Fukuda, does these incredibly intricate paper cuts with usually just one piece of paper. Okay, now don't get overwhelmed. You don't have to do this, but it does really give you an idea of, you know, the application of just having, using just a single paper, piece of paper and a knife or a scissors for what can be accomplished. Okay, the possibilities, right? Another one of my favorite artists, Henri Matisse, French uh, painter, but also known for his paper cutting. Now, when you first look at this, some of the shapes look almost childlike, and many of the shapes are very organic. See how they look almost like plants? Uh, a lot of these shapes were done freehand. They weren't even drawn first. Um, some of them were, but a lot of them were just done kind of freehand while he was eyeing up the paper. But what I think a lot of artists, or I should say non-artists, don't really realize is the beautiful composition that this a piece like this has. Just look at how long your eyes flow um, from these bird-like shapes, from shape to shape. Um, it's very carefully and well thought out. As random as this looks, this was intentionally placed, these, these, these bird shapes, were intentionally placed in a pleasing manner in a composition so that you spend a lot more time enjoying and looking at the piece than if they were randomly placed. So keep that in mind in a lot of these pieces. Composition is really important. The Another example here is the modern artist uh, by the name of Chris Natrup. Um, I have a video here as well. He's well known for these large installations that he creates. Okay, and the whole idea, going back to this, the whole idea is that if you get lots of inspiration from different places and you pull all those inspirations together, that is really what creates you as an artist. If you take just one artist to get inspiration from, uh, you kind of end up becoming just that artist. So. Try to pull several influences from, from what you see here. Take the parts you like and use them to create your own style for this piece. So week one, this week, here's what I'd like you to do. Research and develop ideas. So although I call this a portrait pro project, if you have an, a strong sense of what ideas that you want to put together, um, it probably will be acceptable, but you need to communicate that idea to me. So it could be a 
um, a self-portrait, of course, but it could also be a still life or an animal, all right? Uh, if you are an AP, avoid cutesy pictures. So if it's just your pet dog and hearts all around it, you know, or something like that, if you're AP, I would avoid the cutesy stuff. Um, they're looking more for stuff that you would find in an art gallery or something they can say, wow, I've never seen this approach before. So originality is the key uh, for you guys. We will do breakout groups this Wednesday on Zoom and discuss your ideas. So have something to show me that's ready to go, even if it's just an example you found online or you did a sample or a rough draft or maybe even just a photo. Um, that would be that would be fine too. Um, if you cannot attend the Zoom, some of you I haven't talked to in three weeks, uh, you need to make arrangements with me and see me on a Zoom meeting so that we can discuss your ideas and really help you with the quality of your work and just make make constant self improvements. Um, that's what all artists do is that they're always trying to improve. So it's important to get some feedback. Some things that you can do, start doing today. Here's just a short list of things that I would start collecting for this assignment. Newspaper, cardboard as, as a base surface, or maybe you have an old canvas, that might work. Magazines, pamphlets, food wrappers, junk mail, paper, paper glue, um, you know, either glue sticks or Mod Podge or even um, Elmer's glue could work for this project. Um, some of the examples here I'm showing you are actually from Art One. Um, I think that they're really unique. Okay, this one was Art One, and I think the one of Remy here, if you remember, Remy also uh, was done in Art One. All right, so this one was actually done right on a, a print. All right, they can also be expressive. They don't necessarily have to be realistic. You could stretch and exaggerate features. Um, so keep in mind, they don't, don't have to be realistic, but they should be, if they're not, they need to be expressive. Okay, what kind of emotion do we get when we look at the colors or the exaggerated features? Okay, that's what's really important, the emotional value or the communication uh, in your piece. Okay, that's all I have for now. Make sure you watch those videos. I spent a lot of time researching them, and they really are worthwhile. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or pop in on a Zoom meeting. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.